Welcome to track number five of Spiritual Battles. Now, the next point is the battle to be a fighter. If you read First Kings chapter 19, verse 17, it says, And it shall come to pass, that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall who slay? Elisha slay. Alright? So the next thing is a battle, the battle to accept, to fight about things. Amen. Are you there? Yeah. You see, the first one, what was the first battle? <laughs> to choose what you want. The anointing. Battle to even choose that is the anointing that I want. And the next one is the battle to accept and to believe and to flow with the idea that you are called. And the third one is a battle, right, to, ac- to, to be a fighter. Because you see, Christianity, you see, the Bible says that the one that Jehu escapes, Elisha is the one who will kill him. So Elisha was a man of war. He was somebody who, was, who had a sword, he could fight. So he said, when this one misses him, Jehu will kill him. When Jehu is not able to kill him, Elisha will kill him. I have an, he's, a, he's a killer. He's a fighter. And I came to tell you today that the ministry is not for nice people. So people who want to be nice. People who want to please everybody. People who don't want to fight about issues. And who don't want to struggle. You know, the, the ministry is for, it's a fight. To the very end, it's a fight. It's a fight to the very end. Did you hear me? I said, it's a fight to the very end. But you see, there are too many scriptures that show us how God is love, Christ is loving, Christianity is about love, husbands should love their wives, wives should submit. It's like so much transmission of the message of peace for Christian life that whenever there is a concept of fighting, it sounds almost unacceptable in the church. If God is the one, there will be no fighting. If God is at work, there will be no killing. If God is at work, there will be no conflict. If God was moving, there would be peace. Uh, uh, uh. He said, go and anoint a killer. Anoint a killer. He said, He that escaped from the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall slay. When Jehu kills people, and Jehu, you know, for somebody to be associated with the killings of Jehu, you see, when Jehu, Jehu was just one of the commanders of the army, right? And he was anointed to go and kill. He killed the, the king, two kings. I think Jehoram and another king. You know, because the prophet sent him and poured the anointing on him. He was anointed, right? And then he went to kill. He killed the two kings. The Bible said, when they saw him riding, they said, what is the riding like? He said, riding furiously. Like the riding of Jehu. It's a very wild person. You know. So, Jero, uh, uh, Ahab's children, there were there about 70 of them. They were all in the house. And then Jehu came to the house. He stood as I sent a message to them. See that your master's servants are there. Organize yourself and appoint one of them as the king to be on the throne. And then get yourself to defend yourself and fight for your master's house. That's the type of person Jehu was. And the people said, What? A man who has already killed two kings. We will not fight with you. 
So he said, then let me have the heads of all the 70 children. Outside. And the servants cut off the heads of all the children and brought them outside. Delivered them. 70 heads. Then after that, he went to the temple. He said, Ahab served Baal. But me, I will serve him more. <laughs> Gather all the worshippers of Baal to come for a special memorial service. The whole place was full. And he surrounded it. He said, kill everybody. <laughs> this is the person who Elisha was supposed to come to continue his good works. <laughs> that the one who Jehu does not kill. Elisha will kill the rest. The rest. You say you want to work for God. You will have conflict with your mother. Jesus said, think not that I came to bring peace on earth. You have conflict with your mother, conflict with your father, conflict with your wife, conflict with your husband, conflict with your children, conflict with your brothers, conflict with... If you don't want conflict, brother, step out. Robert Ketting, quick. All those who don't want conflict, uh, please go out now. This conflict zone. I said, oh, well, I don't have conflict. Who have coffee with the church, church members, people, issues all the time. And, and that's where things like leadership, loyalty, all those things come in to help us to know how to fight. Some of the things you can see, this one, it will grow. So let me deal with it like this. The, the serpent that Adam didn't deal with in the book of Genesis. By revelation, it had become a dragon. So some of them, when you see the serpent, say, no, this one. This is how it will become. Then you move it like this. You do this, you do it. And sometimes you look hard, you look wicked. You slice it. <laughs> I least slicing. Are you there? Yeah. You deal with it fast. And that's where all these things come. That's where loyalty lives. Because it's all helping you to fight more issues and people. People will fight with you. You can be the most anointed. They will take you on. They will battle with you. You find them battle for money, battle for hell, battle for things. Find oh, all kinds of things. Yeah. When, I first, when I started working with some people downstairs in my office, after some time, <laughs> they said that, you know, at first they thought, you know, when, I come, when I'm coming to preach, I'm saying, I've come to the you know, presence of God, the holy quietness and this and that. But the issues, after being with me for some time, I said, the, the, the five things from whence I emerge to come and stand on the stage, you never know till you are in it. And you know that there is no minister who comes from a, a soft chair of peace. And he comes to stand there in glory, glorious ecstasy. Oof, I just came from heaven just came from heaven to minister glorious graces. Usually you just came from hell and are coming to minister powerfully. It's a very good message. There are times that I preach I feel like somebody with arrows like this. I feel as though I'm like this. With arrows in me like that. And the blood is coming down as I'm standing to minister. It's like I'm preaching with it. Yeah. Sometimes I weep. I tell you that times I have I can have a camp. You know, I remember one time I had a camp. I was somewhere. I prayed a powerful as soon as oh before the presence of God. I went outside, I went by the tree and I wept like a baby over an unrelated problem. Unrelated to the preaching. I mean within two minutes of finishing preaching, I was crying like a baby under the tree. But nobody will know. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows your battles. The battles from whence you emerge to stand on the stage. At least that's why you should find a nice shirt to wear so that people would think that. <laughs> shirt power. <laughs> it can never, it, at least, it will cover your battles and your wounds. <laughs> That's ministry. Welcome to war. Welcome to fighting. 
Him that Hazel shall not slay, Jehu shall slay. Him that Jehu shall not slay. No other person than the double portion man will come with his sword to finish off everything. Hey. In fact, uh, 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 and you remember Elijah? How he killed 400. He said, give me a sword. Kill 450 of them. Yeah. That's why one pastor's wife she turned to her husband and she said, You are tall. Where will you have peace? <laughs> See, and even if your life is very peaceful, it's a sign that you are not in the ministry. Yeah. It's a sign that you are not in the ministry. Yeah. It's a sign that you are not in the ministry. One day, I sat with some pastors and I was asking them certain questions. I wanted to know whether I could talk to them about some things. So I asked one, two, this, one, two. And I realized that no, these people I can't. I shouldn't talk to them. I shouldn't mention certain areas, talk about certain things. So I, I left it. So then one of them, I transferred him from one church. From, he was assisting, doing something. And I sent him to be in charge of a church, a big church. So after about a year, I had the same type of meeting. And I started to see. You know, I have to test to see whether you have some of my problem. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> then I saw that. He had now begun to have my problem. Because I had heard about it. So when I tested the waters, I realized that, huh, you, are, you have now joined the battle. Because I said he was under. He was assist, just helping around. So he had no experience certain things. But when I put him out there, he was there alone. Goodness. He started. Somebody who for all his years, all his life, has never had certain problems. Recently, one of my pastors began to have a, I. I had a problem I was telling him about it. He suddenly began to have that problem. He said, he said to me, I cannot believe this is happening to me. I said, oh, don't worry. It's happening. I cannot believe that it's happening. It's happening to you because of what you are doing. Remember I told you about Daniel's wife and children? They came for the wife and the children. It's because of what the guy was doing, the work that they were doing. That's why they killed them. So Sunday, the work you are doing, it will just... Take you on. So if you are not ready, someone says, My mother said it, my father said, Well, you are not worthy. You are not worthy of this work. My mother said this, this, this. my father said, I have to look after my, my father, I have to do my, my, my mother's. You are not worthy. You are not worthy. You are not worthy of this, this work. You think we are, we are all doing this at a cost? Yeah. My mother is a widow, she lives in Ghana. She has been a widow for since 1994. She lives all alone there. You know how often I'm able to see her? How much time I'm able to have for her? It's not easy. Yeah. I also have a wife. I have children. As you see me standing here, as if I don't have, I don't have anybody. I have. <laughs> you get it? Are you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm preaching a good message. Anoint the man who has a sword. Anoint a man who has a sword. Anoint a man who has a sword. You are ready for fighting. Conflict. Do you think Billy and Kumo, who came to Ghana, just came with the approval of the whole world? Say, oh, you are very good. What a good thing. What a... No, it's not like that. It's not like that. Do you think the church where we are in, in Kolegono, we had it peacefully? We've been there up till today. Where there is a house that we, we bought. Eh? There is a lady. You see, the, the house belongs to three women. And one of the three, she's in the house. She says, she won't move. <laughs> yeah, we have paid them. And it was left with small amount to pay. I mean, well, it was just move and then we'll pay you. Just small, just a, a very small, not even, I mean, very small, less than 10%. And the only thing, just move out so that we pay. Now she says she will not move. She's living there forever and ever with her children. It is our house. We have renovated, we have done everything, except that corner. <laughs> yeah. And her sisters want us to fight with their sister for them and there are some battles because we have so many types of battles 
some of the battles we say you eh, I won't fight you because it will make me tired I'll go and fight another place you'll be there another thing from somewhere will remove you not me you wait and see it's always going on court I have lawyers sometimes they go to court financial I can get calls sometimes I just like people don't realize what I'm doing I'll be talking and I realize I'll be talking with a country, a lawyer from another country who is defending us in another country on a case to do with something different to in another la- a language that the person has to translate. <laughs> hey, still after you come and stand peacefully and you're ministering, glory to God. Let's turn our Bible to Christ, the this of that of that of that. Yeah. Are you ready to fight? Yeah, you are not ready to fight. You are not worthy of this work. Clear out of this camp. I want to fight. Get out of the camp. You are not supposed to be here. Yeah. Battle to survive. How you even survive? The fight to live. The fight to, to be included. You don't want to fight. You want it to be handed out to you on a silver platter. Come on now. Clear off from here. You don't belong here. It's a struggle. It's a fight. Huh? Yeah. Look at us trying to be in Zimbabwe. Trying to be in South Africa. Hey, Pastor Klufio was in uh, Cape, Town, Cape somewhere. Come over. He'll come. Try. Go. Come here. Live here. You go here. They say, you can't do this. You have to work in this Cape. Cape. Somewhere of a Cape. Then you come. <laughs> drive here. Up and down. Every day. Father, hey. Just one check that we will do. It's not, I mean, it's not, if he wants, oh, we are tired. Look, if God has called her, he will open the door. No. Let's, let, let me tell you something. The Bible said there, there, there is an open door, but there are many adversaries. God has called us, but there are many things to oppose. And if you are not prepared for protracted battles, forget it. And for me, I need people around me who can handle battles. And I need people to help me to fight. Amen. And people to understand. You see, a fighting person is not a normal person. That is why the, the, the certain wife asks her husband, <laughs> You at all, when will you have peace? <laughs> because it's not a normal life. It's not a normal life. Yeah. It's not a normal life. It's a little different. There are so many things I cannot do. Can you believe that even in Malaysia, even in Kuala Lumpur, as I'm walking through the places where people will be greeting me. Oh, pastor. Pastor. Oh, pastor. <laughs> in London, when I go and I move, and people will be greeting me. I don't even know where to go. <laughs> Just have a little quiet. A little privacy. Okay. Now, let's go. Yet I have with me 7,000 in Israel, and all the knees which have not bowed unto bow, and every mouth which has not kissed. So he departed thence, and he found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He was plowing. He was working. So this guy was a killer. And he was a worker. He was already working. You get it? Yeah. Now that is one thing. And I'm happy that Miranda is pastoring the church. She's working. She's plowing. You see, before the double portion comes, you've got to plow. You must plow. You must be found plowing. God look for people like this. People who are plowing. Not people who are just... <sighs> Some of the people in our Bible school, they say, they thank God for the Bible school. They are giving them discipline. I said, I was talking to one guy. He said, oh, so I said, he said, oh, by this time, 10 o'clock, I'll get up in the morning at 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock, I, I wake up. That's somebody who is just doing nothing. 
You see, before you will be called. See, God was searching. The people who work with me, I tell them, God searched all over to find only you to work for me. Yeah. When he was looking for this kind of person, he scanned the whole world and found you at this place and said, you, go and be with this person, work with me. And when God was looking for somebody to replace Elijah, Elijah didn't know who he was. He said, there is a man, a son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola. Abel Mehola. God knew Abel Mehola. And he came to Abel Mehola to locate Elisha, the son of Shaphat. He scanned and he found in Abel Mehola this man. And this guy was somebody who had not how to use a sword. It's like a gun. You have to know how to use a gun. You know? God, you, know, you have to know how to cock the gun, how to use it, etc. You don't just have a gun because you can kill, easily kill yourself. Now, as soon as you hold the gun, you may just shoot somebody by and say, what is this? Before you realize, <laughs> you have killed. Yeah. He was plowing. And he saw somebody who was pl- who knew how to use a sword and who was plowing. He found him plowing, working, working. That's why everybody who stays back from the work doesn't do anything, doesn't preach, doesn't get involved, whatever. I don't consider you qualified. When I see someone, so what? I want to be a missionary. I want to. You want to be? You might as well want to be Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you might be Mickey Mouse. But if you want to be involved in the work of God, you need to be a worker. You want to have anointing? You need to be somebody who is plowing, working, 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 working. What do you do in the house of God? What do you do in the house of God? Most of us are prayerless. Is it not true? Is it not true? Yeah. Prayerless, wordless, powerless, fasting free, no preaching, soul winning less. Look at Pastor Kingsley. He's older than most of us here. Huh? But there's nobody who can plant a church like him. Not by stealing people's members, but by hard work. One to one, talking to people, preaching, talking at his age. And some of you younger, you look at yourself, you have become lazy, good for nothing people in the church. You are not worthy of anointing. When I ask who wants anointing, don't raise your hand. Because you are not supposed to raise your hand. It's people who are working and plowing who should raise their hands. And people who are ready to fight for what they believe. You see, there must be something in you that says, no, this is not, this is below me. This work I'm doing is below me. Many of you are doing work below you. The work you are doing is below your capacity to work. You know why I know that? Because I can see the effort you put into other things. When you are working on other age areas. My God, my God, my God, why has thou not forsaken me? <laughs> hey! When your energy comes, and your self comes, for money and for other things. The way you work. And when you come to the house of God, you want to hold the offering basket to just pass it by. And it's finish, you say, oh, I've worked for God. See you. I'm going home. You've worked for God. No time. Work involves certain characteristics. Number one, time. Not everybody knows it. And I'll say all of them. When you are working, it it takes time. So if what you are doing in the house of God does not take your time, then you've not yet started doing the work. Must actually take your time. I don't mean coming to church on Sundays. Sunday doesn't take your time. All normal, everyday life Christians come to church on Sundays. And some of them come to church during the week. And even they come for prayer meetings. So what is the difference between you and a worker? An an everyday life Christian? Are you an everyday life Christian or... A battle acts of the Lord. You are changing. Yeah. Don't be happy that you come to church on Sundays. If that is not work. So I'm doing the work of God. I'm going to church. 
sinners, even Satan, demon possessed people, they even come to church on Sunday. And you are happy that I'm doing the work of God. I'm going to church. I've come back. Glory be to God. For the choir. You are nothing. I said, you are nothing. When you work, huh? When you work, it will take time, time. Number two, you'll be tired. Don't you get tired at real work? So how come this work of God you are not tired? And some of you, as soon as you say, hey, me, I'm tired. I have to go home. Today is Sunday. Yeah. You are not worthy of this work. I said, you are not worthy. Sunday afternoon, you have to be in your house drinking tea. And having, uh, 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 what's the name of that, that food? A uh, pap and uh, the meat. Nah. But have a lama. You have to be in your house eating your pap. Sunday afternoon. Huh? Tuesday. It's like we've got to get home. And as soon as you get home, what are you going to do? Watching television? Watching films? Fooling around? Talking? Chatting on the phone? The same person who says, I've got to go home. My time. time. And when you're preaching, they look at their watch. They look at their watch. They'll be yawning. And so and after church, they have other things that they are doing. Don't bring yourself at all before I deal with you this morning. Elisha was plowing. He was plowing. He was plowing. It wasn't just there. Go and find you shall find Elisha sleeping some. No, you find him plowing. Working. The man who can use a sword and at the same time he can plow. You will be tired. You must be tired in this work. We are not tired. We get tired. I, I, when, I, when I left Malaysia, it was 1 a.m. My flight was at 1. From 7 or 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, they were coming for us. Hey, 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 to the airport. The airport was far away. Driving, get there, check in. And when you check in, you have to be there, hang around for about 2 hours, 3 hours, till 1 a.m. When I arrived here, it was 5.30 in the morning. Straight. And I was awake. Come to the camp. Go here, go here, go here, go here, go here, go here. Do this, 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 this. And I'm in between. There are meetings of things. And issues you don't know about. Oh, 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 Phlegmatic people are often lazy naturally without knowing it. Yeah. Phlegm. Do you know what phlegmatic is? Phlegm. <laughs> and, and when you spit it out into the sink, it doesn't flow. It's slow. That, that's the idea. Or you have to force it. That's the idea of phlegmatic. God wants you to work hard. Amen. Working. Everybody say, I'm ready to work. Ready to work. How many are ready to work, for God? ready to work for God? Amen. Amen. Work takes your time. Work. Time. You spend money to work. You go to work. You spend money going to work. Now people say, can we have some money for transport to go and do follow up? We'll give you stones. Stones. That's what we'll give you to do follow up. We don't give money to go and do follow up. We give you pebbles. When you go to work, you tell them, give me money to come. You just go humbly to work for a homosexual. You go faithfully. You get up running after money. Don't ask about money. Going to work. You get tired, exhausted. You come back. Don't have time for anything. That's not a problem. This is God's work. And God has called you to work for him. He wants you to work. And it has working hours. Don't you go to work 9 to 5, 8 to 5, 8 to 4, 7 to 3, huh? 5, 8 to 6, 10 to 12 to 12, 12 to 7, 7 to 7, 24 hours. <laughs> Isn't it? Emergency. How come? In the work of God, when we work, there are times when the work is prime. 
at times. Like right now, I didn't come here to sleep. So I, I don't have to think of sleeping. My, my goal is not to sleep, to be rested. So, Bishop, we want you to have some rest. I didn't come to rest. <laughs> On Sunday is not a time for us to rest. Forget about Sunday. Sunday is for God. Sunday is for God's work. Everyday life people, they come to church on Sunday, 8 to 10, they finish their service, then they go, they play golf, they play around, they, they go swimming, they do whatever. But not you. You are not that type of person. You are a worker. There is nothing like Sunday. You should not see the sunshine on Sunday. The sunshine that you are seeing, the fresh air. No, why, why should you be seeing fresh air? You should be in the work. Involved. Up till the night. Till midnight. If you close before, if you close even by seven, you, your, your work is very small. Seven o'clock. I mean, Sundays, I have to control myself. I I go home on Monday. My work cannot get finished. If I don't control them. Sometimes I grow wild. I say, you people, I say, I'm going home. I'm going home. Otherwise, we don't go home. Isaac, what do you think? Yeah. You see, and, some, and that, this is the same question somebody asked me. Oh, if there is work to do, I'll come. If there is work to do, I'll come. And some of you, the reason why you don't have work, because you don't create the work. There are jobs you have to create. There are billions of people waiting. But you don't want to go out witnessing on Sunday. That's why you are sleeping. If you want to go witnessing on Sunday, you sleep. You can have, a, after you finish your morning program, in the evening, you can have a special tea time outreach in your house. A house, a home outreach in the house. Where we have invited people to come for something to me and then show them a video or to speak to them or whatever. It's an outreach. Then you continue. After that, you pray. Then they go. And the thing is continue. It's endless. You are the one who does You don't want to work. That is why you are saying that if there is something to do, by, by 4 o'clock I finish. By 3 o'clock I do. By 1 o'clock I don't have anything to do because there is, you are doing nothing. You can witness until we are witnessing to 100 people today, Sunday. Witness her till the night. You, the Bible says in all labor there is profit. It is we who are not working, not that there is no work. There, there should not be even one person here who can find his way to his house by 7 o'clock on Sunday. Why? And that's why you and your wife should be in the thing. Because if you are not in the thing with your wife, your wife will say, so what are you doing in the church? You at all. When will you come home early? Who is in the church that you are meeting there? What are you doing there? Have you got a boyfriend in the church? Have you got a girlfriend in the church? You are falling in love with the pastor? If you are falling in love with the pastor, say so, so that we will know. What do you think? Go and anoint Elisha. He's plowing. I said his word. His word. Yeah. He's plowing. Amen. Now, let's go on. So he departed thence and he found. So the battle, listen. It's a battle to enter the work. No, listen, listen to what I'm saying. To create the work is a battle. Bootsal lies as if there's no work to do. That's a lot of work to do. If you create the work. Take this camp. I didn't need to come. All I could have done is uh, I've arrived from Malaysia. So I'm tired. So I take it. Uh, I go straight to my hotel. I have a good rest. I have lunch, breakfast, and in, in the evening I meet with somebody. The next day, I just take my time to refresh myself on certain things. And then, following day in the morning, I fly to where I'm going. And when I get there, I have a day's rest. There are some people, when they fly, they arrive, they cannot do anything until the next day. You see, but for me, I think the days are few. So I don't have time to spend resting. So what I'm trying to say is that it's a battle even to create the work. Because you can be there, so there's no work in Namibia. There's nothing to do. We have, we have only 11 people. When we finish visiting the 11 people, there's, there's, we finished. We finished the work. We finished the, the created work. But the work that can be created, you are not creating it. That's why there's nothing to do. There, there would be nowhere for us to rest on Sunday. I mean, and I'm telling you that if you work for God only on Sundays, it will be almost enough for most of us. If it is only Sunday that you really work, just the Sunday from the time that the service closes. Now it's like now that ourselves have come, we are now going to work 
full course. Visitation, outreach, one to one. And then there should be a service in the evening with some kind of something. Outreach, something, taste. Why should you sleep in the evening? Why should you watch TV in the evening? What are you eating? What are you doing? No, 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 no. That's the day we don't eat in the house. We eat outside. We eat on the job. On the job eating. On the job eating. That's the, that's the one day that we don't eat in our house. We eat, we eat at work. Yeah. Whilst we are working, walking, so you just find something, get something that you can bite and be moving. Oh, you are working. What are you resting for? Why are you having a dinner? What are you resting about? You don't have anything to do. Are you plowing? Then don't be surprised if you are never anointed. Don't be surprised they never come and call you. Because anointed people are hard working people. Anointed people are people who plow. They are not people who sleep, who rest. Who do nothing. He was plowing. And I'm sure there are some many spiritual qualities about Elijah that we don't know. But at least one of the things you see that he was plowing. You see that he was a man who could fight. And he was a man who was working, 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 working. I mean it. I mean it. And I tell you, it is when you start to work. People who don't pre- pa- uh, Andy, Pastor Andy, stand, let me ask you a question. No, not you, the other one. Will you, can you say that you can relate with me better since you started pastoring your church? You say you can relate with me? Yeah. So when you can relate with me better, it, it shows that you are getting closer to a place where you can also carry a certain anointing. You see, but before you start doing that work, when you watch me preach and give my mind, all you can say, oh, Bishop, he's very passionate about what he's doing. Oh, Bishop, he's, 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 I, like, I like his love for souls. No, one thing that I, I like about him is, you know, the way he seems to be interested in, in the work of God. You know, uh, uh, he has a great zeal. That's all you will say. But you see, when you yourself start plowing, then you, you, you yourself start to come closer. Uh, I, I, you don't just look and say, I like your passion for soul. You do, what is your passion for soul? Why do you like my passion for souls? Do you don't have one? <laughs> yeah. So as when you start working, actual work, actually preaching, actually having something to you look at you look at somebody, you realize that you start coming nearer and nearer and nearer. When Benny Hill was coming to Ghana, you know, he didn't come. He was supposed to come, but he didn't come. I sent him I sent a message to his assistant. I said, Can I send a, a mail to Pastor Benny? And will you make sure that he said, Oh, I'll make sure that he reads it. So I sent the mail, I said, I said, you should not worry at all that you didn't come to Ghana. It's not a problem at all. We have sorted out everything. I said, me, myself, sometimes there are places I can't go. But any time he's ready to come, he should come. We are flowing. It's not, a, it's not a beast at all. You get it? Because I myself, there are programs. I also canceled a crusade last, last year. I was supposed to go. I said, I won't go. <laughs> I can't go. You see? And, and, <laughs> they know they were not singing yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, what I'm saying is that you can relate because you yourself are doing that work. And you know how it is. You've planned the thing, but you realize when the time comes that it cannot really work out. But if I was not, I'd just stand back and say, I mean, how can you let a whole country wait there? What kind of person is it? Disorganized, disorganized uh, 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 people uh, without planning. You just, huh? so-called ministers i mean what oh our children you, you, you just organize i do know how much money we spend you, see, you start to talk like a fool and the reason is because you yourself you are not actually working when you are actually working there are so many things you understand whether they are good or bad but you understand and said oh i understand understand why bishop is talking the way he's talking understand what he's talking about and when you come to work full time one day you say, ah, one day Bishop will say, he said, he eat from widows. <laughs> I didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> but now I understand. <laughs> and I'm also eating from ravens. <laughs> and widows. <laughs> you see? So that's why 
Sometimes even when somebody says, oh, I'm a businessman, or I'm a financier, I say, you know, I like you to come and just work. You let's work. I know you have money, you are giving money. It's nice. It's nice. But as you come, you understand. And then you even, you even have a certain appreciation. You see, and you even have a certain love which you don't have when you don't do the work. Yeah. Because you realize that what I'm going through, he has been through this. Whole. He must have been through this and he didn't stop. You know how many people have orangulized me? How many people who have loved have turned against me? And one day when somebody turns against you and becomes an orangue, then you will understand that for Bishop to still add you and love you, he went an extra mile over a mountain because he had had an experience already. And he had been through certain days and he still decided to add you to trust you even though you may be, because I tell you, the people who have turned ever against me, they were, you know, when we have meetings, they will stand up and explain the loyalty message. <laughs> no, I, well, I'm serious. There's one guy, he gave me what I would call a nightmare. For two weeks, I couldn't sleep. And that guy, he's one of the first people who ever taught stages of disloyalty. Apart from me, he taught it. Yeah, not that he, not that he, I mean, I, he taught it. I watched him teaching it. Loyalty. Yeah. Then 10. So, when somebody is very bubbly and, oh, I'll be with you to the end of the ages, I'll die with you and I'll go to the end with you and so, you know, you just listen back because you've seen. Time will tell. You'll be pushed around and see that I'm still there. So then you'll realize that, hey, one day, one of my pastors, he started a church. And uh, he had, the whole church was full of people. Then one day, the choir leader came up, led the choir powerfully. Then the choir, I don't know what the choir leader told the people. Then the choir leader said, I'm going. Everybody left the church except one person. Pastor was left with only single one <laughs> person. <laughs> he said, I now understand that book, Loyalty. <laughs> book. Huh? But he has not seen some before. What do you think? Huh? How many realize that you understand the books better when you read? Yeah. Most of the books. You think you've read them. Read it again. You see that in today's era, you realize that it's different. And you realize that it's the same thing. But now it means totally something different to you. Yeah. <laughs> First you wrote it to, you read it to pass exams. Are you there? Or you've gone home? You're still around? Is it powerful? Plowing. 